It's mailbag time. Let's see what's in here this time. This is pretty cool, this thing here. Don't forget to check out the links down below for these items. Is there anything here you're interested in? Go and check those out. And thanks a lot to my Patreons that help support the channel, help me to buy items like this and my other supporters like I have memberships as well on YouTube. Help me to buy things from our bag and bits of test equipment and that sort of stuff. What on earth is this? Ah! I need to pop a knife for this. Now I recently built a free touch deck by Dustin Watts. I built one. And I found that my computer wasn't compatible with it because my computer has an old version of Bluetooth. And you can get these adapters. You can install a later version of a Bluetooth card. And this is one of the adapters. So it's just off eBay. And you just plug an adapter in there, plug a card in there, you've got a cable you have to hook up. I think it's like a dual Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth thing or something like that. I don't bloody know. But <laughs> you've got some antenna stuff you hook up. I bought a couple of different ones. I don't know what I'm going to end up using. I obviously have to get the Bluetooth card as well. It's one of the things I've all tried to purchase. And once that arrives, I can actually try and chuck the Bluetooth on my machine and hopefully use it for doing a live stream with my touch deck thing. So this is basically a PCIe adapter with the Bluetooth a module which will go onto it. Well, I'll see for the module. But this is for my Mac Pro 2010. The Bluetooth on that, so it's just too old. It doesn't work with the technology that's around these days. So required an upgrade, and that's in theory supposed to do it. There's a blog post and stuff like that saying they've done it, and a web page is saying they've done it using these adapters and stuff like that. So in theory it'll work. I haven't looked into it enough to know if it will work for sure. It's documented as being possible. Anyway, we'll find out. I'll probably do a video on it. All right. Now I saw this on Dave's channel, EV Blog. He did a video on this, I think he had a mailbag or something. And it's basically a GPIB adapter. So I've been playing with GPIB a little bit recently. I've used one of these knockoff Agilent GPIB to USB adapters. And I've had some problems with it. I don't know if it's an adapter, whether it's my setup or whether it's a USB driver problem, but it's just not stable. It kind of works. Anyway, so I'm looking at these different things and you've got this KISS 408 module. I saw Dave did a little video on. They're available on eBay, so I thought I'd grab one. I might have a play around with it. I think it's got internal logging and stuff like that as well, but anyway, it's, let's get it out. So it's a GPIB plug, standard plug. Ethernet port and USB port on the back. So the USB there for power, I believe. And the Ethernet is for the actual network connection. So I've got one of them. I also ordered something else, but it's not arrived yet. I don't think. Um, it's supposed to do captures and stuff like this. With the PC software. I'm not sure if it will work on Mac. I haven't looked into that side of it. It's always nice if I get something to work on Mac. But you never know. But it's it's basically a controller and microcontroller in there. It does like conversions for you and stuff like that. So. Anyway. I'll play with it later. Now, I've got a suspicion about what this could be based on the packaging, as we'll find out. Yeah, I'm right. It's just some more lower modules. I've shown these lots of times in the past. These E32s, this is A66T30D, uh, which is a one watt modules. Again, just for stock, because I'm using these things in projects and I want to make sure I'm always going to have some. If something fails and it blows up modules like I haven't before, I've got modules to replace them with. I don't want to get them in the position where I'm relying on these projects to work and these things are manufactured and I run out of E32 modules because I don't make them anymore. So I want to make sure I've got these in stock. If you like mailbag videos, make sure you give us a like and click the thumb up button. If you're not already subscribed, then subscribe. Make sure you do that. You get notifications about new videos. So these are just some batteries. You've got some CR2016s, a couple of them, and some SR626SW. And this is quite commonly used, it's quite a common watch battery. Like this watch uses it for example. I tend to get through a lot of them because it's got a few watches that all use the same battery so I'm forever buying the damn things so here's a pack of 10. Much cheaper from China than they are from local stock but are they any good? I don't know. I think the ones I've been getting aren't very good anyway so these probably aren't any worse but they look fine. I mean they might Sony but are they really Sony? Are they? Um, but yeah. It's always handy I've got batch of this laying around. Things you use often, 
you know, get a couple of them around so next time you got them. Nothing like having to wait for something for a week or a month before it arrives. These are some more little um, cotton tipped cleaning sticks. So I showed this previously as well, I got some before, and I thought I'll get some more because they actually work quite well. They're really good for getting little crevices and little small spots and cleaning around component legs, stuff like that. Really good. You know, you also get the standard cotton swabs, you know, the little cut and bud things. And these are just much more precise, much finer wooden sticks. They work quite nicely, so I thought I'd get some more. I saw somebody else using them at one point, I can't remember who it was. I thought, oh, they look pretty cool. I'll get some of them. And yeah, they do work alright. If it's your first time here as well, in case you don't know, I do lots of repair videos. So I've got lots of mailbags and repair videos and all sorts of reviews and all sorts of stuff. So make sure you watch to the end of the video where I've got some playlists. Or even just check out my channel playlist. There'll be a link somewhere, I'm sure. Um, actually, I've got some links in the description. So various things. So um, if you want to go and look down there as well, in case anything else you're interested in, not just mailbag. Anything electronics related, basically. So what I tend to focus on is electronics. Okay, just a couple of batteries for cordless phones. Now I did have one of these lying around for a while, like a spare one, which I used in a piece of test gear to replace a dead NICAD pack that was in it. It was the same voltage, so I just replaced it with a nickel metal hydroid. Looks fine. That's in the HP 8165A, which I repaired a month or so ago, a couple of months ago now probably. I didn't have any left, because I did have one, and I've now used it, so... This is what my cordless phone uses as well, so I thought oh, I'll get a couple of these then. Always handy to have things lying around, because when you need it, you need it, and it can get you out of a bind. This looks promising. Here's another adapter, another PCIe adapter, with a Bluetooth card already mounted on there, and a little screwdriver too. This is, I think this was specifically for my machine, or at least it's listed as that. Yeah, I think I've got some other stuff still coming. And here's the back of the unit. It's got three antenna ports on here. So I can't quite see what the mount is. Can you see? J0, J1, J3. Where's J2? There might be a J2 somewhere. Anyway, it's supposed to be Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but it doesn't mention Bluetooth. There you go. Here's a close look at it. So there's J2 over there. So Broadcom BCW94360 CDAX, apparently. Adapter just there. Which should look very similar to the other adapter. So there's both adapters side by side there. So this one just arrived in this packet and this is the other one I showed before. They are different. But they both have one common thing. They've both got these USB connectors on them. So this is a hardwired version. This is a plug-in version. So it knows the data pins, not power pins. So I'm not quite sure about that part of it. I think this is the one I need, this adapter here. I think that's the one I need for my computer. But I needed the card from this adapter. And I thought, well, I might as well just get a whole unit because it was basically the same price was much in it, anyway between getting this card with an adapter or just getting the card. Let's hope we've got the right one. So now we get any bigger things. Let's look at this one. This is from Alltronics. That's what the invoice says anyway. <laughs> this was an eBay purchase but you can also get this directly from the manufacturer. But I got it from eBay because that's what I thought I was doing at the time. It's the Atlas Zen by Peak Electronic. So these things. So they make lots of little testers on the same form factor. There you go, get it out. All got the same form factor. These little testers they've got. It's obviously just the same case they use for everything, different colours and what have you. And it's uh, for testing Zen diodes. Tells you some information about them. So it can measure up to 50 volts. As you can see here, saying it's greater than 50 because there's nothing on it. Let's go and get a diode to test. Here's a diode. Let's hook it up. You can see it's been around for a while, it's a little bit corroded. What does it say? 18 volts at 2 milliamps. Can I change those characteristics? Yep, 5 milliamps. 10 milliamps. 15. And back down to 2 again. So it's got a slope of 15 to 20 ohms, interestingly. And it's hold, I'm guessing. Cool. Well, that seems to work. Excellent. So though when it comes to like, testing Zener diodes, there's various ways you can do it. You can actually just run a power supply with a resistor in series and just measure the voltage across it to see what it's loading at and that sort of stuff. You can do that kind of thing, which is kind of what this thing's doing in a way, for its own power source. 
But sometimes it's nice to have something you can just do quickly in circuit and just clip it on and, and use it. There's been many times that I've wished I had one and I finally got around to buying one. Now they're not particularly cheap considering what they are, but it's an invaluable tool. And I'd say there's been lots of times that I wished I had one. So the manual goes through some theory and stuff like that as well. It's pretty nice. And I did actually try and arrange to get some equipment from Peak Electronic Design. They were going to send me something a couple of years back, but for whatever reason it just fell through and never really happened. I've tried to get in touch with them since then, and I haven't actually had a response, which has been a bit disappointing, because it did look like they were going to send me some stuff. Anyway, so I have to be like everybody else and buy one. Ah, that's a drag. There's actually some other things I want to get from Peak Electronic Design. There's some other testers I want, like the DCA75 is one. I've got one already, which is the 50, I think it is. No, not. Yeah, I've got this one here, I've got the DCA55. I've had this one for oh, a few years now, actually. I think I've had it for about probably four years, maybe. Testing transistors and stuff like that is handy for that. But um, they've got some other ones which are a bit more versatile. You know, you want to test your MOSFETs and the uh, Triax and what have you. And, you know, you need things like that. So like, right now I've got some Triax thing on my desk here, which I would like to test. Anyway, so if Peak ever see this video, then get in touch. I'm still interested in working with you. Right, let's see what's in this box and figure out how to get into it. Looks like through here. Let's get a real knife on, let's just cut through this. That's must have blunted around knife. Decent packaging at least, I'm getting that much. It's always good. It's always nice to see decent packaging. There's a teaser there. Here's the back. And there's the front. So this is a GPIB to Ethernet adapter. This one's, you know, had a bit of a hard life. But, you know, if you want to try and save some money, you have to get one which isn't necessarily pristine condition. But I'm pretty sure the one I purchased had a bumper on it. Let me go and check that. Well, this looks nothing like the unit I purchased. So the one I purchased was in much better condition. It wasn't all dirty, it had a bumper on it. The back didn't look like this. This is not the one I purchased. So I'm gonna raise a dispute with that and say I've been ripped off because that wasn't what I paid for. That is not what I purchased. And I can use this video as evidence. We should power it up and see if it actually powers up at all. I'll do that right now. Power supply is multi-voltage, 100 to 240 volts, so that's fine. I'll just chuck it straight on. That'll be fine. Let's do this right now. Let's power it up and see if it goes bang or if it powers up at all. Okay, plugged in, powered up. Backlight works. And it's showing full. There we go. Booted up. Here are no land for connection found. So it looks like it will probably work, but it's nowhere near the condition I actually expected because that isn't the one I purchased. That's disappointing. Hmm. Subscribe, click the bell icon, thumbs up, all that usual stuff and I'll catch you in the next one. I'm going to jump on the internet and raise a dispute for this thing. Bye.